don't worry, there's bad news and good news. Bad news is there's no one righteous, no not one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The good news is that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. And the great news is Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace that you're saved, through faith, not of ourselves, it's a gift from God, not by works, lest any man should boast. So nobody's going to be able to stand before God on Judgment Day and say, God, hey, I deserve to be here. I've earned it. It won't matter whether Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, or Hitler. No one's good enough in God's eyes. The book of Isaiah says even our righteous acts are as filthy rags before God. And the Bible tells us, do not be deceived. That neither idolaters, nor adulterers, nor fornicators, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, or swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And that all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Do you fall in any one of those categories, if not several? Then you're in a lot of trouble. That's the bad news. You know, everybody knows John 3.16. It's probably the most memorized Bible verse there is. But people don't memorize John 3.18. It says that he that believeth on the Son is not condemned, but he that believeth not on the Son is condemned already. Have you humbled your heart before God? Have you turned from your sin? Have you repented 180 degrees, turned away from your sin, and trusted in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for your salvation? If you've not done that, I've got bad news for you tonight. You're condemned already. But that's not what God wants for us. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But you got to humble your heart before God. The Bible says that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. That's the first step you've got to take. Humble your heart before God. Say, God, you made me. You know me. You made me for something better than this. You didn't make me for going out and getting drunk and fornicating and lying and stealing. That's not what you were made for. You were made to glorify God, to serve God, to give Him glory, to do good works for God. But oh man, we spend all of our life flipping God off, telling Him, go away, we don't want Him. If you spend enough years of your life telling God, go away, I don't want you, I don't need you, one day He's going to grant you that wish. Oh, and that's going to be the worst day of your life. He's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, if you've never turned from your sin, if you've never trusted in Christ for your salvation, you know, I can tell you the exact, the, the very sin that's going to be the one that puts you into hell your very first one. Do you know it only takes one sin to change you from being a child of God to a child of the devil? The very first time that you lied, the very first time that you stole, the very first time that, that you lied to someone, lied to a family member, so the first time you consciously knew that what you were doing was against God's law, but you did it anyway. That was the moment that you went from being a child of God to a child of the devil. And all the thousands of sins you've committed since then. They're just, they're just adding on to the wrath for the day of God's judgment. Oh, but God does not take pleasure. God, God takes pleasure in casting the wicked into hell. But he'll have to as a just judge. You know, everybody loves the sight of God that's loving and merciful. And yes, God is loving and merciful. People will come up and tell us, oh, just tell them God loves them and that's it. Well, yeah, God does love you, but God is not limited to just one attribute. God is loving and merciful, but He's also a just judge. Imagine if someone raped and murdered your niece or sister or cousin, and then stood before a judge and said, Oh, yeah, yeah, judge, I, I, I raped and killed her, but hey, I'm really sorry, so how about you let me go? And what if that judge said, Oh, great, you're free to go then. Would you call that justice? No, that'd be a travesty of justice. You would cry out for justice. Well, God is even more just. And as a just judge, he will not turn a blind eye to the sins that we've committed against him. If he's loving, then he cannot be an unjust judge. Oh man, imagine, you know, most people, the problem, that's the way I thought the first 20 years of my life. Well, as long as my good works outweigh my bad works, I'll be okay with God. As long as I get a C plus or better on God's test, I'm okay. No, God demands absolute perfection. If God is holy and perfect and just and righteous, then, then he can't allow anything that's unholy or unrighteous or unjust in his presence. Just one sin was enough to cast us into a lake of fire. So what are we going to do? And you know, all the good works in the world can't wash away one of our sins, let alone the thousands that we've committed. 
Imagine you got busted for Grand Theft Auto. You stole like 10 cars and you stand before a judge. And, and he says, okay, you're guilty of a serious crime. You gotta pay a $250,000 fine. Or you're going to jail for a long time. And you're like, oh man, I'm broke. I can't pay that. So you try to get out of it. You say, oh, well, you know, I know people who steal a lot more cars than I do. So that makes me innocent. That ain't gonna work. And you can't say, well, most of the time, judge, I'm not stealing cars. So that, you know, so you shouldn't penalize me for the few times that I did. That ain't gonna work. And you can't say, well, uh, you know, I, you know, most of the time, like I said, you know, come up with some other excuse. You can't do it. It's a just judge. He's got to condemn you. But right before they drag you off to jail, right before they drag you off to jail because you couldn't pay the fine, some guy you don't even know walks in and says, hey, hold on, judge. I love this guy. I love this girl so much that I sold my house, my car, everything I own. Now I'm going to write a check for $250,000 and give it to him. Well, you could take that money and you could give it to the judge and justice would be served, and you'd be free to go. But not because it's something you deserved or earned or worked for, but because it was a free gift that was paid out on your behalf. And you can either accept that gift or reject it. Oh, and what a fool you'd be to reject that person's check. Say, ah, oh, no, you know, I'll, I'll, wash, I'll wash dishes, I'll clean tables, and I'll figure out some way to pay off my fine. You'll never do it. Oh, what a fool you'd be if you rejected that free gift. Well, don't reject the free gift of salvation. Uh, do not reject so great a salvation as through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You know, we love the sight of God that's loving and merciful. We all think of God like he's some big cosmic grandpa in the sky, a big rich grandpa in the sky. And he gives you whatever you want. And he never tells you to do anything wrong. Well, God is loving and merciful, but he's a just judge. And you know, how can God be both a just judge and be loving and merciful at the same time? Well, when Jesus Christ died on that cross, that was the moment in history when God's perfect justice was able to meet up with His perfect mercy. And that we committed the crime against God, but He paid our fine. So don't go around thinking, well, I'm basically a good person. There's a lot of people worse than me, so I'm going to be okay. No, you're going to only have to give account for one person on the Day of Judgment. One person you're going to have to account for on the Day of Judgment. That's yourself. You're not going to be able to stand before God on Judgment Day and say, oh yeah, God, well, I stole some and I lied some and got drunk and fornicated some. But, hey, I didn't do it nearly as much as that guy back there in line. But God's going to say, oh, we'll get to him in a minute. But right now we're talking about you. You're only going to have to give an account for yourself. And the Bible tells us that one day we'll have to give an account for every idle word, every thought, and every deed. Oh man, what will you say before God? Because all the good works in the world can't wash away one single sin you've committed. If you live to be a hundred and did nothing but good works between now and your hundredth birthday, it won't wash away one single sin that you've committed. Not one, let alone the thousands. So what are you going to do when you stand before God and have to give an account? You can't allow any sin into His presence. Oh, it's only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father but through Him, and nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Some people say, that sounds kind of intolerable. Jesus Christ Himself basically abolished all other religions. Sorry to be politically incorrect, but Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. 300 million Hindu gods cannot save you. Only the shed blood of Jesus Christ can save you. Muhammad didn't die for your sins. Buddha didn't die for your sins. Only Jesus Christ. And then he rose again from the dead to prove that he was in fact God.